My great-grandparents were afraid to be labeled as enemies of Soviet power because people who were said to be such enemies were killed or died in the labor camps. That is why one day my great-grandparents decided to flee Uzbekistan. In another country, nobody knew about their riches. On a hot summer day in 1938, they traveled to Tajikistan, the neighboring country. After the long, hard ride on a crowded train, the young family, husband, wife, and little daughter arrived. They knew nobody in Tajikistan. When I came back from the school, I was surprised to see a lot of people at my house. They were sitting in groups, eating, drinking, and dancing. I went quickly to my mom to get more details. Your sister get married today, said my mom. Very happy about this news, I went to talk to my sister. But when I got to her bedroom, I saw her lying down on her bed, not happy at all. What happening to you, sister? You are supposed to be dressed in nice clothes and have makeup and perfume on. She cried. I'm so sorry, sister. I told her I understood, but I was really confused. So I wrote my mother a letter <clears throat> and asked her if I could come to New York, where she lived, and give me. <clears throat> and she gave me the green light. So now I have to ask my grandmother. She knew it would be a loss of help on the farm, but she was afraid to become because she knew that I was 15 years old, black kid who was big for his age <clears throat> and liked to speak his own mind, would cause a problem during those times of uh, segregation in the South. She thought it would be safe to get me out of town. We continue our journey. We walk all night. My sister-in-law stumbled on something and fell down. We thought that she broke her leg, but she didn't. She only needed to rest a few minutes, and then she was ready to walk. We were really so tired. We couldn't walk anymore. We walk during the night and rest during the day. We cross fences, a railroad track, and two ranches. It felt like our journey will never end. Unfortunately, we wouldn't see each other in those days due to the lack of diplomatic relations between the United States and China. We all knew and had to accept the fact that we were never going to see or meet him. Years later, when I came to America, the first thing I did was go to his cemetery with flowers. I knew his face only from a photo. I thought about him a lot at this grave. He was my favorite grandfather. Dear, dear sir, I am not yet American citizens. I admire the United States and I have made the choice to live in America and to contribute to the development of this country as others have done before me. I filled out an application in order to obtain American citizenship. I'm writing to inform you of my fear about the future of this country. During the election campaign, you expressed ideas that I and many American people don't accept. The racist and homophobic remarks and the scorn of women recall dark periods of history and bring back regretful time of this country. One day, I changed my iPhone's language from Japanese to English because I needed to improve my English as soon as possible. I wanted to make, uh, make my surroundings as all English. Then I found that even Siri, a computer program uh, that works as an intelligent assistant on iPhones, couldn't say my name. <laughs> Siri made it sound like Heidi. 
That correct pronunciation is hi, like hide. Hide, yeah. I know it confuses some people that it looks like the English word hide, but it's pronounced very dif differently. I was born at midnight on January 9, 1940. It was a cold and rainy, and the sound of gun and uh, thunder were outside, not because of my bears. <laughs> the British military had entered Syria, coming from Jordan and uh, Palestine, uh, clashing with the army of France. World War II was it is it is big. My father was farmer. Our house was in the farm. Near of farm was the French army, staying inside the train station, located beside us. Despite her fear, my mother's joy at my breath was expressed in her face. You know what? I hate you so much. You kill me every morning when I wake up alone. I realize it, what, uh, I realize it was a nightmare again. I will be reborn one night. I will walk with you in my dream. I won't ask you for anything. I will have this moment. You will be just mine. Please don't disappear. You are my soul and heart. If you disappear, I will disappear. Please come to me every night. I wait. I cannot live without you or with you. I'm sorry. I couldn't. I could. I cannot. I couldn't. Forgive me. When you showed me how to use a hammer to hit a nail, I saw then that I would need balance in life. When you taught me the right way to cut a piece of wood or measure something, I learned that that in my life, no matter what, need to be accurate in, with my acts. When you taught me how to replace a lamp and then we should stay in the dark, I learned that when life leaves us in the dark, just switch the lamp and bring the light back. My father's birthday was important in my family because we celebrating this day for my father's and for my pine tree. On his last birthday, my family went to the mountain close to our town. The mountain was covered by a lot of pine trees. The air and the smell were different. We did not see our house from the top of the mountain, but we recognized the pine tree in our garden. It covered everything. We decided to play Georgian music. We danced and sang happy birthday for my father. He was happy. I will never forget this day. The soil under my fingers now, my shady cousin is running away from me, and my, my mom is shouting, son, come home. It's already dark. I don't care. My last green and red marble is lost in the grass. My dad is playing his old acoustic guitar and singing off key. Siente tus sueños me miras llorando. His favorite song. He says, I don't understand poor music. I don't care at all. My green and red marble is yet lost. I joined the line as everybody does. In my hand, I was clutching 40 kopecks and was waiting for a miracle. If I bought ice cream, I would not have money for the pencil. I didn't like that the line moved fast. I needed time to decide what was more important for me now, what I wanted more. So I went to end of the line and move ahead with the line again and again. The ice cream ling uh, uh, lingered um, in my mind and wasn't let go. Reading is a chance to be somebody else or just to be yourself. To understand yourself or somebody else or just to spend some time alone. Reading is your private time. Reading is your personal freedom. My mother is still reading a lot. Every month she goes to the library for new books. And here is what she thinks about the link between reading and freedom. Now, when I have a lot of free time, my love of reading is particularly useful. That is, my love of reading defines my freedom. 
I don't need somebody's attention to feel comfort. I have things to do. When I came to the United States, I decided to improve my English by working with a volunteer who would teach me idioms and pronunciation. In our first class, uh, she asked me how I spent the weekend. And um, I told her about my exciting trip to a ballet. However, to her, it sounded like a belly. So I kept talking about ballet, and she kept hearing belly. I have thought about my time in high school, and there were many occasions when I did not understand the classwork or the reason it was being given to me. I was too shy to raise my hand and ask for help when I needed it because I didn't want to fear and fear and feared I would be judged. And I realized that my behavior was not wise since everyone at some point in their life needs a helping hand. Oh, she said the wish said the well. The next day I went back again and throw a penny into the well. I wish that this well would not say, ouch, what, what to do if my wish, could nev my wish could never come through? I run home, I took my pillow from my bed and run back to the well. Then I throw the pillow into the well and made a wish. I owe you an apology. I didn't steal. I only borrowed your tongue to make my crafts. I'm afraid mine is too odd to make sense. Instead, I promise to return a mixed emotional poem a brown hybrid of black and white cauldrons in which all your words are float in a panic stew. I am from Kingston, Jamaica, where reggae, reggae roots are from. I am from where people comes and go. I am from Sunshine City. Good morning, butterflies. I am from the wood and water of the blue sea. I am from the mountain, heaven, and hurt. I am from the rivers of Babylon. Right this second in the subway, I'm about 5,000 people getting on different lines, more than 500, 550 people reading a book, and more than 2,000 people playing an app on their cells. On the streets, I'm more than a half million people eating pizza. <laughs> I'm more than a million people dressing in black. <laughs> I'm more than five million people wearing jeans. I'm more than eight million people of all races, ethnicities, religions, cultures, philosophies, predilections, and tendencies, looking for a myriad and things of things.